Okay, so now we are finally ready to analyze our frame structure with Karama. And actually, we are going to start off with the two hints frame because I think that case is more simple in order to start to start understanding frame structures. So for that, if you remember, you have to make both supports um, pinned, right? And we also need to uh, deselect the join here because we don't need a hints in the bin for the two hints frame, right? The two supports are the only hints of this structure. Okay, so now let's calculate it. And of course, we need to get the analyze component here into the canvas. So let's get the output of the assemble model component. And there we go. So the calculation is done apparently. We can see first, we can see that we are not getting an error. And we also see that we are getting two displacement values, which of course make reference to the two load cases. So everything looks so far so good. And now we connect our analyzed model to the model view component like that. And we can see how, uh, and I have also activated the bending moments here. So you are um, free to check the, this option here, field and bending moments around the Y axis. But basically, we can see how now we are seeing uh, some certain deformation into our system, right? Which you can exaggerate with this scale factor. And by the way, if you do double click into this uh, slider, you can also set the maximum value, right? In case that you are not seeing the deformation clearly enough, right? So you can uh, feel free to play, of course, with the scale factor of these um, diagrams here. And also, feel free to play with the dimensions of our frame. So, of course, we can change the dimensions as we can see uh, as, as, uh, <laughs> as we make the, the span width um, bigger and bigger, the deformations become bigger as well, and we can play with the height as well. And feel free to do that. And of course, since the two hints frame is a statically indeterminate structure, what we can do, if you remember uh, chapter one, is to change the dimensions of our cross section and that also um, let's say has a certain influence into our bending moments right into our bending moments or force diagram so let's activate the numbers here and we can change the cross section and we can see how the bending moments change as well but actually in order to understand this properly what we're going to do is to First, we select the cross section option so we can see the bending moment diagram more clear. And at this point, we are going to deselect the deformation as well. No, actually, we are going to, to keep the deformation, right? But we need to, to understand at this point, okay, why, <laughs> why um, is this frame structure behaving like that? So I don't know, why does this bending moment diagram look like that? Why do the deformation look like that? Okay, so first of all, if you take a look to the deformations, uh, the, the first thing that you need to notice is that these uh, corners, they keep their original right angle, right? So this is still like an anti degrees angle. And this is because they are, um, they have a certain um, bending stiffness, right? Otherwise, we wouldn't have this uh, rotation here, let's say. So that's the first thing that um, you need to notice. And as we're going to see, those um, stiff corners are what uh, provide lateral stability to our frame structure. But furthermore, we need to analyze why the bending moments look like this, right? For our vertical load case. And the reason is, let me explain it. So uh, we said that we have here a statically indeterminate structure which means that we can release another degree of freedom in our support and it will still be stable, right? So let's get the right support and let's release the displacement actually uh, along the x-axis. So if we do this, we can see how this uh, support is no longer here, but here. And actually, right, and actually in order to make it more clear, let's activate the reaction forces as well. So there we go, and these are my reaction forces, which are going to make, which I'm going to make a more, um, a bit smaller, let's say, at least in terms of visualization. So let's say the maximum value as one, and 
Okay, there we go. This, these are my reaction forces, and now I have released the vertical displacement here, so I don't have any kind of horizontal reaction force. And we can see how the bending moment diagram is exactly, exactly as the one of a simple beam. If you remember the chapter one, right now, everything is uh, slowly coming together. And the thing is that if we activate this uh, support in the longitudinal direction, once again, what happens is that we get some reaction force here. So to make it, um, in other words, this support is pushing right to the, to the left side. So what this is doing is to create a certain constraint here, because if you imagine this column, we are pushing it at the base. So we are uh, creating some kind of a uh, fixed support for our beam, right? So if we take a look at just, if we isolate the beam, this could be more or less like the beam with fixed supports that we were seeing in chapter one. So this is how a frame works, right? It basically, it fixes the displacements in the support in order to create this um, kind of constraint for our beam, which of course, it, it helps to uh, for the bending moments because now we can see how the maximum bending moment is not 150 in this case, but uh, lower than 100. So this is uh, helpful for the vertical loads. And this is basically how frame structures work. At least this is how I understand them. So yeah, that's right. So that's what, that were the bending moments for this uh, two pins frame. Uh, at least in, in terms of vertical loads. And what we can do now, of course, it is to take a look also to the um, CR4 theorem, which of course looks like this, right? This is similar, like a simple beam. And in the columns, we, ha we have a constant CR force, which is basically taking this horizontal reaction up into the beam. And this horizontal reaction in the beam, it's converted, of course, into an axial force. So if we we select the CR force diagram, and if we activate the axial force diagram, we can see how we have, of course, the vertical, um, this uh, compression forces in our columns, which come from the vertical load, but we have also, and this is very important, many people forget about it, we have also um, compression force in our beam, which is coming from this horizontal reaction forces here, right? So I think that now, <laughs> We are starting to understand properly how frame structures, frame structures work, at least in terms of vertical loads. So let's get back to our bending moments. Let's get our deformations again. And yes, yeah, so these were basically the two pins frames. And what uh, we can do now, of course, is to, uh, is to uh, fix the rotations at the base. And this is more or less similar, but again, we are getting bending moments here because we are fixing the rotations at the base, right? So that would mean that the many moments in the columns are the maximum many moment at least is uh, actually higher because we are taking some, because we are making our columns uh, stiffer and we are taking many moments from the beam. So it's making sense. And this could be our free hinge frame. And of course, the deformation should be now smaller. Let's check that as well. So deformation 0.2 centimeters. And if we release, release this, so now it should be like 0.21. Okay, that's a small difference, but still a difference. And of course, it is also related to the cross sections that we define here. Um, okay, and that would be our um, fix, our rigid frame or fixed frame. And finally, let's take a look at the three hinge frames. So for that, we need to set our hinge supports here. And we also need to activate our <laughs> join, finally. So let's activate it and whoop, there we go. <laughs> so now you can see, and perhaps we can start up uh, without any deformation. So you can see how the bending moments at the joint location are zero, right? Exactly zero. And we can play around with our hints and we can set, set different uh, yeah, locations for the hints. <laughs> but at any location, the bending moments are zero, right? Okay, perfect. And, and uh, yes, another thing that we can realize is that since now we are dealing 
with a statically determined structure, we can change the cross sections or the cross section dimensions and the bending moments. Dot, <laughs> they don't change a bit, right? They are exactly the same. So, of course, the bending moments are, are exactly the same, but we have to take into account, I mean, keep in mind that <laughs> if we make the cross sections too small or too thin, of course, the deformations uh, are going to become bigger and bigger, right? Even though the bending moments remain the same. So, and actually, let's <laughs> deactivate the bending moments for one second. And now the question would be, and actually you can see our things here, right? You can see a certain uh, discontinuity between two, between these two elements, and that's because of our hints here. And finally, you could ask, you could ask, okay, and but what happens if we assign another hint to our structure? Okay, so if you are brave enough to do that, we can, for instance, add another hint into our structure. So let's make it bigger, multi-lane data no. And let's say at a hint at the node number three here, right? So if we do this, we can see, <laughs> actually, we can see how we don't have a frame anymore. And the reason for that, of course, is because our structure has become stable, right? If we have a statically determined structure and we add another hint to it, or we release another degree of freedom, it becomes a mechanism. So let's quickly delete these hints here. Okay, so again, this was my uh, three hints frame. And now let's get back to our two hints frame. So let's uh, delete our joint. Because what we're going to do now is to take a look into the effect of horizontal loads into our frame structure. So for that, we have to come to the model view component and shift um, or shift from load uh, case number zero to load case number one. And there we go. So, and we can even activate our loads, which are acting on the first column here. And let's also activate my bending moment diagram. And there we go. So, these are my bending moments. And we can see that, first of all, this is stable. Second of all, we don't have uh, bending moments at the supports, right? Because they are in supports. And also, we can see that this works because the uh, corners are because they have a certain bending stiffness, right? So this is how the frame structures get uh, lateral stability, right? So that's, that's it seems basic now, <laughs> but keep in mind that if you uh, would like to assign joints to these corners, it wouldn't work any, anymore. Because for instance, let's, let's activate our uh, three hints frame again. There we go. We can see how the bending moments are zero there and let's get that closer to this corner here and if we assign again a corner <laughs> a, a joint in, at the at the corner number three we can see how our frame structure is unstable again so again for the stability of frame structures it's important to keep these corners um as stiff corners right as we were seeing in the post formal book of course, what we could do is, of course, but what happens if I make our supports uh, fix again? So if you do your support fix. So first, this would be our, this could be our, um, rigid frame, right? Like that. And the thing is that, of course, now you can, um, assign both hinges here. And actually, before doing that, since this, uh, if this looks like all the, the columns are taking, um, the the most most part of the load and this is happening actually i'm sure because the columns have a stronger section than the beam so for instance if we make the columns look thinner now we can see how the beam takes on more and more bending moments so let's keep it like that and as we are seeing this is a rigid frame and we could eventually assign uh, two hinges right because the structure would be still stable um, and there we go, because the supports are fixed. But now this is not a frame anymore, at least to my understanding. But we have two cantilevers here. So again, in order to have a frame, we have to, we need to have um, a stiff corners there. So let's delete the joint number three as uh, quickly as possible. And that would be actually it. So this were my, this is my, oops, my two pins frame again. 
there we go. Actually, this is not my two hints frame, but now this is my two hints frame, and that would be the bending moments, of course. And we can take a look to the shear forces and to the axial forces, right? And uh, this is interesting. We have these um, compression forces here, which are coming for the horizontal load in the beam, I mean. But now <laughs> we have one column which is under compression and the other one which is under pressure, which is helping to uh, counteract this uh, moment, this overturning moment, right, that the lateral forces are creating. And this makes even more sense when we have uh, buildings that are made up of uh, several um, frame systems, one above the other, right? This overturning moment, which turns into compression forces in these um, columns here and tensile forces in this other column here, okay? So actually, that could be our analysis of uh, frame structures.